Agudvach. It says the way you approach, the way you launch Shabbos Bereshis, that's the way the whole year will go. The question is, why Shabbos Bereshis? We knew Rosh Hashanah. We felt it on Yom Kippur. The decisions we make are really pivotal. And this, it's signed and it's sealed in Rosh Hashanah Rabbah. Why is Shabbos Bereshis so pivotal? It's, it's already the side of Rosh Hashanah, it's sealed Yom Kippur, and why is specifically the way we approach life on, on Shabbos Bereshis, why is it so special? So the Rebbe Hashab, one time, it was in the year of Tav and Tess, he was reciting a Hasidic discourse, and there was not enough room in the room for all of the Hasidim. Many, many people were there. And they had to remove the table that was in front of the Rebbe Rashab during the discourse. But un- unobtrusively, it, they took out parts of the table until they removed the entire table from in front of the Rebbe Rashab. And when the table was removed, the Rebbe Rashab, he was, her eyes were closed and he kept saying the discourse. When he finished the discourse, he opened his eyes and he looks and he says, where's the table? And he smiled. Then the Rebbe Rashab said the following story. He said that a lady of Badichev, who was an angelic personality, when he uh, learned how to shecht a chicken, he was a sheikhet, he was a ritual slaughterer, he um, went to shecht the chicken and he said the bracha for, uh, for shechita. The bracha to shecht, and the bracha you're supposed to say before shechting a chicken, he said the bracha. And but he had such ecstasy and such deveko, such attachment to God, while he said the blessing, that by the time he finished the blessing, the chicken had escaped. So he finishes the blessing. Bless you, Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to slaughter. And when he finished the blessing, he wanted to shach the chicken, as he was supposed to. The chicken had long escaped. So he says, Who is that hid? Where is the chicken? In a similar way, although Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sebuchas Torah, we heard the shofar, we fasted Yom Kippur, we danced with the Torah. The question is, where is the chicken? The question is, where are we after this great experience? Where are we personally? Where are we in our, in our mundane, down-to-earth lives? Do we really... Are we, are we really in touch with the divine revelation that we've experienced of Shani Yom Kippur and Sebuchas Torah in our mundane, down-to-earth lives? And that is what Shabbos Bereshis is about. Shabbos Bereshis is about channeling all the inspiration of the special holiday season into the mundane, into, into the, our down-to-earth lives. On that note, I want to share with you an incredible story that Rabbi Ari Smith shared, a personal story about himself, which is a really incredible story and something which brings us home. Rabbi Smith said that when the Rebbe had a stroke on the 27th day of Adar in 1992, he wanted immediately to come to New York. But he was living in Israel. And he departed from Israel to New York three weeks before. And he wasn't sure if this was the right time to go back again to New York, but he just wanted to be with the Rebbe. And he asked the Rebbe if he could return. The Rebbe said to him, the Rebbe's response was, he should stay. The secretary asked the Rebbe, Rabbi Gron asked, Rabbi Klein asked the Rebbe, should he stay in Israel until he gets engaged? The answer was yes. So he had to stay in Israel until he got engaged, and now he had another impetus of why he should get engaged. Anyways, he does get engaged, gets, he gets married, and it was Simchas Torah. It was already eight months since the Rebbe had uh, come out to see the Hasidim, and everyone felt like, of course, very upset. But he wanted to go to be by the Rebbe for this special holiday month of Tishrei with his wife. But on the other hand, his, his family and his wife's family were both very, they were discouraging them from taking the trip. He said, why are you going to the Rebbe? The Rebbe's not even seeing everyone. No, you won't be able to see the Rebbe. You're going to go to 770, you go to the Rebbe's synagogue. You won't see him. The Rebbe had the stroke. The Rebbe's not seeing anyone. So they decided they would ask the famous legendary 
Chaser Rabbi Mendel Futafas on what their next move should be. Should they indeed go to see the Rebbe or not? Should they go, they go try to see the Rebbe? They asked Mendel Futafas. Mendel Futafas said that Kalim is Mamshech there, which means a vessel draws down light. If they will go to see the Rebbe, if Chassidim will go to see the Rebbe, then the Rebbe will come to see the Chassidim. So they should go and see the Rebbe, and automatically the Rebbe will come out and see the Chassidim. That's what the Futafa said. And by their families, this legendary Chassid was the last word. So they set out to New York. They came to New York, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. And of course, the highlight of the whole month of Tishrei is the holiday of Simchas Torah. And in the home where he was staying, he was staying on President Street, the home of Rabbi Yosef and Sarva Lincoln. And at, at the home he was staying, well, he wasn't the only guest there, he was also in the same home was Rabbi Halperin from Eretz Aliyah. Unfortunately, he just passed away a little over a month ago. Rabbi Halperin had brought with him a guest from Eretz Aliyah, someone who did not look very, uh, didn't look Chabad, he didn't wear the Chabad hat and the Chabad jacket, but he was there, and uh, Ari Smith said that that year on the Sukhas Torah, the Rebbe did come out, as Rebbe Mendel Fotafas had predicted, and I myself uh, was there as well, and although it was after the Rebbe's stroke, the Rebbe really encouraged with the self-sacrifice, the singing and the joy, it was a very special Simchas Torah. So, the, the morning after Simchas Torah, Rabbi Smith is a little bit tipsy, and he wants to uh, find out why this man had come from here to Leah to see the Rebbe. What was it about the Rebbe that had drawn him from Israel to come visit the Rebbe? And because, again, he was a little bit tipsy, Rabbi, Rabbi Halpern and this gentleman were in the middle of a deep conversation, but he said, I want to know why you came to the Rebbe. And this man told Rabbi Smith, do you really, do you really want to know? Rabbi Smith said, yes, I really want to know. He said, okay, I'll tell you. He said, two months ago, I heard about this stock. I heard really good things about a certain stock. And I discussed with experts in the, this industry, and everyone predicted that this stock would really do well. So I put into the stock more than a half of all of my worldly, all of my resources. And Baruch Hashem, shortly after my investment, the stock skyrocketed. When I say it skyrocketed, what I, what I mean is that all of a sudden I was a rich man. And sorry, it wasn't two months before, it was six months before Sukhas Torah. He invested, and it became overnight. It became a wealthy man, but he felt bad about the fact that he only invested half of his wealth into the stock, and so immediately he invested a lot more, all that he had gained plus much more, and the stock had a few ups and a few downs, but uh, it kept its value for a couple of months. There is a Jewish joke that uh, a, a cantor and a stockbroker come to heaven and the cantor sees that the stockbroker is getting more attention than he is. He's like, why is the stockbroker so valued in heaven? And the answer was given to him, says the angel to the stockbroker, listen, when you said your cantorial uh, songs, not everyone was inspired to return to God. However, when the purchase, those who purchased the stocks uh, never stopped praying. So he prayed a lot. And actually, because the stock went down, it caused him to try to better himself spiritually. And because of this, he ended up going daily to the minion, the morning minion of Rabbi Halperin in Herzliya. So that Rabbi Smith is listening to the story, and he says, tells her, this man tells Rabbi Smith, a little more than two months ago, 
without any uh, advance notice, the stock has a dramatic downfall. And those who understood the market predicted that it's not going to go, not going to send again. And they they all suggested, all the those who know stocks suggested, now is the time to sell your shares and to go out with what you have. So that morning, he comes to the Chabad Center in Herzliya, does his morning prayers, and Rabbi Halperin Al Vashalom sees him and he says, "Danny, what's happening with you?" So I told him. Danny said, tells Rabbi, tells Ari Smith, I told her Rabbi Halperin was going on. Abi Halperin says, no, it's not, what, it's not the way you do things. You don't make a move like this without asking the Rebbe. Write a letter to the Rebbe and ask the Rebbe what you should do. Don't, don't make a move like this without the Rebbe. Okay. He writes a letter to the Rebbe and after morning prayers and Rabbi Halperin sent the fax to the Rebbe's secretary that very day, later that evening, he gets a phone call in his home, and on the on the call is Rabbi Halperin. He said, "Rabbi Broner just just read your question from the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, when he when Rabbi Broner asked the Rebbe if he should sell the stock, and the Rebbe moved his head no very strongly, don't sell the stock. Then the Rebbe Broner asked the Rebbe for a bracha for you, and the Rebbe shook his head for a bracha for you. So I went to sleep very peacefully, very happily." and uh, waiting because I knew I was in good hands. A few days pass, and all of a sudden, there is a sharp decline in the stock. The stock goes really down, and the, the loss really bothered me. It was, imagine, I couldn't manage this, this great loss. I felt I couldn't handle this. When I came next morning to prayers, I told Rabbi Halpern I can't handle this anymore. I'm going to sell it before it gets worse. I'm going to save what I can. Rabbi Halpern gave him his trademark bear hug. He didn't let go of him. And he said to him, until if you really feel you can't handle this, then write a letter, a letter to Rabbi again. Ask him again what you should do. So again, he don't, don't dare do go against what Rabbi told you. If you really can handle it, write a letter to the Rebbe again. So he wrote to the Rebbe again a second time. He waited for the Rebbe's response. The next day, in the afternoon, Rabbi Halperin called him up and he said, the Rebbe does not allow you to leave. Rabbi Gordon read your, read your uh, request. Your request was, does the Rebbe agree and give a blessing for me to sell the stocks? Again, the Rebbe shook his head no. Rabbi Gordon says, should he not sell the stocks? Rabbi said, no, he should not sell the stocks. Then, Rabbi Gordon asked for a bracha for you, and again, Rabbi shook his head, yes, for a bracha. This man told Rabbi Smith, he said, the truth is, I was hoping that after this great loss and experience, the Rebbe would allow me to sell the stocks. And I have to admit, unpleasantly, that I was really disappointed. Deep in my heart, I felt the Rebbe must be a holy man, but he does not understand stocks. And certainly not in his medical condition right now after his stroke. He does not have understanding of the stocks. But I didn't have the didn't have the I didn't have the gall to go against his words. And I kept the stock. I kept the stock for ten days. In this these during these ten days, the stock went up and down, but then all of a sudden it happened. There was the greatest loss of all. The stock went a lot lower than when I first bought the stock. For sure, it was it was way lower than the its initial ascent. It went lower and lower than, the, than when I first initially bought the stock. I was totally shocked and I had, I had invested all my money in the stock. I decided to sell it and to get out of it. I decided I'm not going to talk to Rabbi Halper anymore. I don't want to bring this to Rabbi anymore. And I tried to avoid Rabbi Halper, but by divine providence, Rabbi Halper and I happened to meet somewhere. And this is the third time he told me, listen, 
write to them again. So I wrote to them a third time. But in my letter, I know there's no tone of a question in my letter. Instead, I wrote to the Rebbe, I am informing the Rebbe that I'm selling the stocks and asking a blessing for my business. This time, the Rebbe's response came a lot earlier than expected. Rebbe Halpern was very excited. Rebbe Groner said that when he read to the Rebbe that he wanted to sell the stock, the Rebbe actually, those after the stroke, the Rebbe couldn't really speak that much, they have actually said the words name. Name means no. I was, I didn't know what to do. I was so in pain. I told Rabbi Halpern, I'm embarrassed to, uh, to admit that when Rebbe said this, I felt like he's not going to let me go until I am a poor man at the, at the, in the street, until I'm homeless. A few days pass. Situation doesn't get worse, doesn't get better either. The, uh, this, this tremendous loss made me crazy. One day I'm sitting next to my financial advisor in the bank and I spoke to him about this investment and he just says very dryly, doesn't appear that this stock will ever get higher again. So at that moment, I decided I have to sell it, and I sell, sold everything. I s- finally, I breathed easily. I can't lose it anymore. I, I sold, sold the whole thing. The next day, I checked out what's going on, going on in the market, and I breathed easily again. The stock has not descended. On the contrary, it went down a little bit. Mazel, he felt. Mazel, he told Ray Smith, that I'm not part of this anymore. But two days later passed, and then it happened. The stock ascended in a way that no one expected. There was no, there was no um, prediction about this. It went higher and higher and higher. Within two weeks, the stock went far beyond the value when I bought it at first. And I can't tell you how painful it was for me. I couldn't leave my home for three or four days. With my wife's encouragement, I finally went back to the Chabad Center in Herzliya. And Rabbi Halperin looks at me and he sees I'm so upset. He says, what happened to you? I was embarrassed to tell him. Rabbi Halperin says, it's still going down. I said, no. I started going down. So Rabbi Halperin took me immediately to his room his office, I told him all that happened to and I, I, I concluded my story with a painful sigh. I said, no, I lost all my, all my money. I be hopping started, now this part of the story, this is the point of the story, it's a little hard to relate to, but this is the story. I be hopping screamed and he said to him, you're sitting here like a Tisha because of the money that you lost, the money is have a lot of volume. The money is nothing. Money is foolish. You need to be upset about the fact that you didn't listen to what the Rebbe told you to do. This is not just about money. You're worried about money. So my Halperin started thinking deeply. They turned to me and very decisively said to me, in a few days, I'm going to the Rebbe, be for there for the month of the holidays. You're going to come with me. You're going to say, you're going to apologize to them. So Danny said, with, eye, with his eyes full of tears, that's why I'm here. He told Ari Smith that uh, by whatever came out of the balcony on that Simchas Torah, I raised my, my cup to say Lachaim, and I asked the Rebbe for forgiveness, and my eyes met the Rebbe's eyes. I didn't scream. But I said very clearly, I asked for salicha, for forgiveness. The Rebbe looked at me and shook his head. And it appeared to me that the Rebbe was focusing on me after I said the Chaim with him. And I'm sure that he accepted my request for forgiveness. And now Rabbi Halpern is telling me the order and how I need to do to shoot. That's a, that's a story. Story highlights that the Eid Sadiq 
doesn't just tell us about the spiritual things with the Torah and the mitzvahs and how we're supposed to pray better to God, but rather the tzaddik and the Torah governs our physical and mundane life as well. In this week's Torah portion, we read about how God created the world. And it says in Rashi, the reason the Torah begins with the story of creation is because if the nations of the world will tell us we're thieves for taking the land of Israel, we should respond to the nations of the world and say to them, the whole world belongs to God. So just like the nations of the world could have a claim against us and say that we stole the land of Israel, we have to respond, no, the world, the world belongs to God. So too spiritually, we have to think about the nations of the world inside of, inside of us who say to us that God only governs the spiritual. God only governs the Shoshana and Yom Kippur and Sukkot Torah, but the chicken is not in the hands of God. The physical reality is not in the hands of God. Comes the, comes the Shabbos Barashas and tells us and reminds us the whole world belongs to God. The physical, the spiritual, whatever is going on in our life is in the God's hands. And the words of Etzadik are not just about the spiritual, they're about the physical reality as well. Barashas Bar Kim, God didn't only create, create the world a long time ago, but every single moment, creation is renewed. And therefore it's impossible that there's something going on in our life that God did not see and that prevents us from doing what God wants us to do. And therefore we're full of such joy after Shabbos Barashas because we are conscious of the fact that God created us with our challenges. God didn't only create the heavens and the earth. God also created Bank of America and Chase and Cedar sinai and Kaiser, Kaiser Sunset. God created our reality and our circumstances that we're in. And there's no dissonance, there's no schism, no separation between the spiritual and the physical. And Mashiach is not about something happening somewhere or somewhere else. Mashiach is about the light of God coming to this physical world. The, it's a customary to renounce after Shabbos Barashas, Jacob went on his journey. The Torah is actually talking about Jacob going on his journey home to visit his father Isaac. And it seems very incongruous to the title of the Torah portion, which says Jacob went on his journey home. The title of the Torah portion is Vayetze. And it talks about Jacob going out of Israel, going to the, to the worst city in the world, the city of Haran. What does Jacob's departure to the city of Haran have to do with Jacob going home to his father, to Isaac? And the answer is, it's the opposite. The question is the answer. Mashiach is not about God being revealed in a holy place in Jerusalem. The Sheikh is about God's light being revealed in the entire world. And therefore, how do we come close to Mashiach? It's specifically by going out of the holiday month into the mundane, bringing the light of God wherever we are in the most mundane place by the midst of us, the Torah that we learn in our offices, in our places of business, on the street, in the subway, in the bus, wherever we are, and connecting with God in the most physical, the most down-to-earth way, wherever we are, that's not going away from the month, not going away from our father Isaac in the analogy of Jacob. Jacob comes home to Isaac specifically by going out to Haran. In a similar way for us, each of us personally, we specifically come home to God by going out of the holiday month and bring the light of God in the here and now, in our circumstances that we're in. May Hashem help us, each of us and all of us, that we should take the inspiration of this month and bring all of our resources, wherever we are, whatever we have, to God by using out the physical for the spiritual. And the Alter Rebbe says that God blesses the Jewish people with physical, with physical abundance, and the Jewish people create spirituality out of the physical abundance, and therefore God blesses us with more and more. And the main thing is not the physical abundance, but that we should see the coming of Mashiach, take it from the Miyad Mamash immediately, literally, we go tonight to Yishalayim and HaKadosh, where Mashiach said, and dance in Yishalayim with our forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and all those who passed away, the Kar of Mamish, and the holy mountain, and the holy land, in the Beis HaMiglash, the Mashiach Tzakeinu. L'chaim, l'chaim, v'roch.